Hello everyone. I decided to finally film this video I've been working on for quite a while where I watched every single OCD movie I could get my hands on. Um, I know that the title says every OCD movie but I wasn't able to get I think two of them um, anywhere I could find them so uh, it was a little bit misleading but I did watch almost every one I could find. So I wanted to watch um, all these OCD movies to see exactly how accurate there are and more specifically to see if any of these movies play a big part in the average person's current idea of what OCD is. So what I mean by that is most people think of OCD as being clean and tidy and just mostly I think like having a clean house, things like that, and it's very much an inaccurate idea of what OCD is. I'm not saying being clean is not OCD, it definitely is. It's contamination OCD most of the time and I'm just saying that most movies are saying like OCD is just when people are super clean. So I'm trying to figure out which movie is responsible for that. I am not a psychologist. I will get my bachelor's in psychology in the next like five months but that doesn't mean a whole lot in the psychology field. So just keep that in mind. I'm not, I'm not a, a professional in this. I was just interested to watch as many OCD movies as I could possibly do so that I could rate them and see how much they play into this like stereotype of what OCD is. Okay, so let's get started with As Good As It Gets. This one is probably the most popular out of all of these. And the main character is OCD and he has a really clean house but they don't really focus on that part but he does wash his hands which is pretty common in these films. So it's not it's not abysmal. It's definitely I think a little bit better than a filmmaker met a person with OCD in their life but I think they have has a few issues because it's almost like OCD is making him the super mean person and it definitely does not get into any of the anxiety that goes with OCD. Um, Talk Talk is a Spanish movie about OCD and I think I think it was quite accurate. Everyone in this film, each other characters, has OCD but a different form of it so it definitely shows the wide range that OCD can encompass. Um, so I really enjoyed that one and it was also a comedy so it was a little bit funny. Uh, next one was Sleeping with the Enemy. I was not going to include this one because it's not like about OCD really but and I don't think they ever say the word OCD. The main character has a husband who's been abusive to her and he has OCD and he wants the house to like look perfect and stuff like that but he's an awful person so once again we're getting into the idea that OCD means you're you're mean and you're like super controlling so I once again don't like that. I don't think they tried as hard as as good as it gets because he really just like they kind of just like mention that he likes things a certain way. Actually yeah I think this could be a part of why people think of OCD as being like clean and controlling maybe. So I'm gonna put that one in abysmal. It really didn't tackle any of the issues that come with OCD if it was talking about OCD at all. Next one was Dirty Filthy Love. Um, this one I think the title misrepresents the whole movie. It's definitely about OCD um, and this person who his OCD suddenly takes a turn for the worse and he doesn't even know that he has OCD. He also develops Tourette's which is kind of a common comorbid disorder with OCD. So it's uh, him like navigating that and his OCD is definitely more focused on like anxiety about like sitting down, anxiety about just doing things every day, walking upstairs and having to take certain steps, things like that. Um, it's definitely not revolved around a clean house. He also had um, a point where he was like in a hoarding house. If you don't know, um, people who are hoarders can sometimes be that way because they have OCD. So it showed his descent into that area instead of just being clean. So it was probably the most accurate film of all of these. Um, next one was Silver Lion's Playbook and before you ask me in the world neither of the main characters has OCD. I think when people added this to the list they were talking about Patty's um, or Patrick's dad who shows lots of superstition issues 
which is an OCD symptom. The movie is 100% not about OCD. It's definitely more about um, borderline personality and I think bipolar. I think that's what the two main characters have. So it was, I guess, accurate. They, they tried to include OCD. It wasn't like they were doing anything wrong. They just kind of added it in as a random character in the background. So these next two ones, The Road Within and Vincent Will Mirror, which means in English, I think, Vincent Wants to See. Um, those, these two are actually the exact same movie, but this is the German original movie and this was the English remake of the movie. So basically the exact same story, almost like shot for shot in some scenes. And I watched both of them and what happens in the story is that the main character has um, Tourette's he goes into a like, mental hospital um, or facility and he meets someone, a girl with anorexia, and they decide to go on a road trip. But his roommate, who has um, severe OCD, also accidentally like tags along. And so it's about them kind of going on this road trip where things happen. Um, I actually really liked this film. It was like kind of just like lots of fun to watch. Um, especially the English one. I actually like that one more even though it wasn't the original. But as for OCD, the original one, it definitely was just like he's clean and um, stuff like that. Like really didn't go into it too much. Like I did like that they involved it. So I feel like uh, maybe I'm actually going to put no, okay. I'm going to put it with they tried because you know they tried um i'm gonna do the same for the english one even though it was a bit better all right i don't i remember that one up actually because it shows his issue where he if he hits a pothole he then has to get out of the car and make sure he didn't hit someone which is a um obsession compulsion that is kind of unknown about and he also has a counting obsession and i think that's a bit more diverse in his symptoms than the German original. Next one was Elektra and I don't think I have to tell anyone that this one was awful. This whole movie was awful but I really didn't care for their um, depiction of OCD at all. She did have counting OCD so I'm gonna I think put it in the the filmmaker probably has met a person with OCD once in their lifetime um, because at least he didn't do, she was just like super clean. I think she was also clean she, because she was a killer though. So it wasn't specified why, but she also had a counting aspect to it. So I did, I did like that at least. Definitely not a great depiction. Do not recommend watching that movie. Uh, next one is David and Lisa. This one is actually from 1962. Um, and it is about David who has OCD and Lisa, who has, um, back then it was called multiple personality disorder and now it's called dissociative identity disorder. He's, I guess, maybe clean, but I don't think he's like, perpetuating this idea of people with OCD being too clean because his main symptom, or almost only symptom, is he can't have anyone touch him because then he'll get like an anxiety attack. So it wasn't perfect, but I think they definitely, especially for when it was made, they definitely tried. Because that was huge, like 1962 to show it's a romantic movie, so to show a relationship between two people who met in like a mental institution, fall in love despite their problems. And I, I really enjoyed that movie. I think it was well done. Uh, next one is The Aviator. This is about Howard Hughes' life, who had OCD. And I think it was quite accurate. It really got into like the anxiety that goes along with it. And I haven't seen this movie in quite a while, but you kind of like, you just go into this deep hole with him because it gets really bad at one point. And I think it was definitely well portrayed. It was definitely, his house was a mess. So it was not, even though it was a very popular movie, I don't think it perpetuated this idea of OCD equals clean. Next one was Phoebe in Wonderland. Uh, this one is about a little girl who starting to show symptoms of OCD and Tourette's. This one is pretty good. I really don't think I had any problems with it. It definitely showed lots of counting and lots of strange obsessions and rituals. So for this one I'm going to put mostly accurate but has some problems. Um, mostly because there are parts where Phoebe has hallucinations and I th think 
that this was purposely done to show her idea that she has to retreat into Wonderland. But if you didn't know that OCD does not come with hallucinations, um, neither does Tourette's, then you might get that misconception from this movie. But otherwise it was pretty accurate. Next one was What About Bob? This is probably one of my least favorite ones of the movies I watched. Bob basically, he did count steps. He was not very clean, so it wasn't horrible. He just basically had a lot of phobias, um, which isn't the same as OCD. It seemed like he could almost do things despite it all the time. So I think it's a bit better than the Electra level, but it was definitely not great. Uh, next was Matchstick Men. It's about a con man who has OCD and this huge like con is going on. I didn't really like the movie very much, but for OCD wise, the con man had definitely contamination OCD. He's very scared of going outside. It's not like it's inaccurate, but it's just that might be partly responsible for this idea that OCD is just being clean. So I'm going to put it in has some problems. It's kind of in between these two. Next one was eight and this is an automatic super accurate because it's a real-time look into this woman's day, specifically her getting ready in the morning um, and she has severe OCD so you just watch her as she goes through and tries to prepare for her day and it's anxiety inducing to watch her do her daily things. It's a very well done movie. So yeah, it is contamination OCD for the most part, but I'm going to put it in super accurate even though because I don't think anyone would be making jokes about, oh like come clean my house if um, they had seen this movie and that was responsible for the stereotype. Okay, last one is Monk and this one is not a movie, um, but I'm going to include it anyway just because I think Monk probably did have a huge hand in building the stereotype of what OCD is, so I wanted to include it. I have seen all eight seasons of Monk when I was a kid when it was first coming out. Um, I tried re-watching a few episodes and I don't like it anymore. I don't think it accurately portrays OCD at all. He's definitely super organized, very afraid of contamination, everything has to be super clean. It's basically the exact idea that people have of what OCD is, is what Monk has. And I just don't think they show enough of the anxiety that would go along with all these constant triggers and um, problems. I think that's why I'm actually going to put it in abysmal. Because I th think Monk might be responsible for the idea of what OCD is. Before even watching any of these movies, I thought Monk would be responsible. It is the exact idea of what OCD is that people currently have. And it's not very accurate to, I think, the average person with OCD's life, especially to the severe extent that their monk is supposed to have it. So I'm not saying people with OCD cannot have his symptoms, because they 100% can, but I do not think they were going for an accurate portrayal, and I think that probably ruined an average person's perception because the show was quite big when it came out. Okay, so that was my list of every OCD movie I could find and whether or not they were responsible for OCD stereotypes. Um, let me know if you disagree with any of these, whether or not I'm missing a bunch of more movies, and maybe I'll do a second one. Let me know which you think is most responsible for OCD stereotypes.